initiate the discussion on the US presidential election 2020. Thank you, Dr. Swami, and thank you, Raju Malhotraji, for joining us on the show. Welcome, Arvind Chaturvedi and Ramesh Swami. Yeah. Well, welcome to you all. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a great pleasure to have uh, Mr. Uh, Rajiv Malhotra on the, on the show again. Uh, and, and this is uh, an expert. He lives in America. He knows India like the back of his hand. So therefore, uh, my uh, first is I'll make an observation that the uh, I was I had the privilege of making the in India the amongst the political circles the as the only practically the only person who uh, had predicted that. Uh, uh, Trump will be the winner. Uh, the there was uh, under there was a gathering of ministers in one place, and and at that time uh, I was told that uh, the principal secretary to the prime minister said that uh, this was my view, and everybody disagreed. And ultimately, I uh, I had a bet with the PMO as a senior official, and uh, he, then he hosted a lunch for me having won the bet. So I am now making a prediction that in this election also uh, Trump is going to win. And I will broadly express my view on what basis I say so. But for the viewers, I'd like to say that the election polling will, uh, it will be on November 3rd of this year. And I think I've been uh, inform informed that uh, constitutionally it's impossible. Uh, to postpone it, and uh, therefore um, uh, it has to be held. And if it's necessary, they may have mail-in orders or <clears throat> or um, uh, online. I don't know what uh, mechanism. In case the the COVID nineteen has not been contained by then, uh, the there are essentially two uh, two parties: Republican and Democrat. Republican uh, is the second term for uh, Trump. And uh, Democrat candidate is now uh, Biden, who used to be vice president with uh, in the tenure of uh, Obama as president. And so the the most of the votes are between these two parties. But there is a third party called uh, the Libertarian uh, Liberate uh, Libertarian uh, 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 Party, uh, Libertarian Party, which got only three percent votes. But in eleven states, it got the uh, vote would have which would have changed the results had they not been, and the three percent went on one side or the other. <clears throat> so they 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 were larger than the difference between the two uh, principal candidates then. Now, uh, as you know, the American system, uh, the polling takes place, and after that, the, each state uh, has delegates. Uh, not equal, they are different in proportion of population. And uh, those delegates then form what is called as the collegium or, uh, or some other name they might have, I don't know, but I, I recall it was collegium. And the majority of the collegium members is the final result. So you can lose an election and win the, uh, you can lose the popular vote and win the presidential uh, election. And that's what happened last time. Uh, Trump uh, got, um, uh, in terms of the percentage votes, got less than Hillary, but in the uh, delegates, uh, when it was uh, uh, when the delegate vote was taken, he had a majority and a very good majority, and so he became president. And I think that same thing is likely to happen this time too, and maybe the uh, percentage popular vote uh, might be more against him than last time, but still uh, not enough uh, to swing the delegate strength. Now, the real question for us is the issues. What are the issues? Now, uh, as uh, as we are speaking from India, I think, uh, and, uh, my, and uh, Rajiv also is hooked into the Indian um, Indian side, uh, he, he will appreciate. I'm sure that uh, all the uh, people who are watching this program will also be keen. We are not interested in analyzing from the American point of view, we want to know who's going to win and uh, what will be the policies. And uh, if he's going to win, we, we need to know what was the issues which, were, which decided 
his victory so that he sh should not be bound uh, by those uh, issues and which might be against us. So of the issues that have been uh, uh, prominent, the first and most prominent today is the handling of this uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 uh, pandemic and whether it's been handled well or it's not been handled well and so on. It is uh, significant that the number of people dead so far uh, perhaps is in excess of 80,000. Whereas in India, it's uh, still about 2,500 or thereabouts. And we have a much larger population than in the United States. So one, uh, one of the aspects I think uh, which, is, uh, which uh, we are all curious about is why in America, which is so advanced in scientific terms, uh, having this issue where they are doing much worse in terms of casualties uh, than India. But then, nevertheless, the, the, the American people will decide. But then there is also a uh, question that uh, healthcare has now become a major issue. And whether that favors the Democrat or, or the Republicans, that is something that's we've seen. National security policy, I'm quite sure it favors uh, Trump. And uh, from whatever I have read and uh, learned, uh, but we, I stand to be corrected by Rajiv Malhotra. And uh, education and the high cost of uh, uh, education, that's another issue. Uh, gun policy is also an issue. And uh, economy, surprisingly, because during before the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, Trump was doing very well in the economy, and it didn't seem to be a major issue for re-election, at least as far as Trump was concerned. But there is also a third issue which is of interest to India, and with that I will conclude also, uh, and that is how the next administration will deal with China and, uh, in, uh, and with India. Um, and uh, if it's Trump, would he change? Uh, there are indications on some issues he has been unhappy with us because on Afghanistan we did not uh, take a, a proactive stand and uh, there are other issues also I'm told that there it is uh, uh, there there is also the United States uh, uh, international religious uh, something uh, committee of the uh, informal committee of the Congress of congressmen which has said some very harsh things about India's uh, secularism so uh, I would uh, conclude by saying, uh, Sir Rajiv Malhotra, could you, after your due analysis, tell us which will be a better candidate for us in this uh, coming election? And does he have a chance, that better candidate have a chance of getting elected? Over to you. Rajiv, you're muted. Sorry, excuse me, Rajiv. You have, we are you muted. So can you unmute yourself, please? Yeah. Thank you. Unmute yourself. Yeah, it's in the left. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, go ahead. Is it okay? Am I unmuted? Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Swami, and uh, namaste to all the viewers everywhere. Uh, it's always a delight to be on this show. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the short answer uh, to your question on um, which will be the better candidate, uh, in my opinion, Trump is a much better president for India than Biden uh, for the even though Trump ha is not a perfect fellow and has many quirks and uh, vacillates and oscillates and you cannot really tell what's going on uh, but Biden will be a return of the old Democratic Party the old gang will be back this is partly the Clinton partly the Obama era they don't have any young blood uh, that is in senior positions they have a lot of junior people some uh, Islamic people, some Indians also who are very radical leftists, but they are sort of junior people. Uh, as far as the senior brass is concerned, if there were a Biden presidency, it will be a return of the same uh, cabinet people, the same advisors, the same thinking of the past. And, you know, that is not going to be good for India because since Obama's era, actually things have gotten more anti-India in the Democratic Party than before. Yes. Uh, in every situation, they have jumped on uh, against India uh, uh, because they are particularly anti-Modi. They are particularly anti-Modi. 
uh, they were anti modi uh, did not want him to get the visa to come to this country and all that they wanted all these international human rights inquiries on uh, his role in ayodhya whatever whatever uh, when the trump won all that was hushed away when the if the democrats came they will revive all that and there will be some enough voices uh, enough uh, uh, of their people to wanting to stir that up there is a very strong pakistani lobby in the in the democratic party there is a strong islamic lobby so there is a it's a mishmash of uh, something equivalent to you know the indian left something it's become like that it wasn't so radical it was more during clinton's era it was more middle middle of the road i would say uh, but during the obama era it shifted more to the left so i i think that uh, uh, a return a return of the democratic party to the presidency uh, would have these kind of issues uh, and besides you know india has achieved certain some traction with the trump administration there's good chemistry with modi um, and uh, trump is a sort of person who uh, you know if he likes you personally it means a lot to him if he doesn't like you it, it really troubles him a lot uh, so i think given all these factors a trump presidency would be a better option from india's point of view of course uh, it's not necessarily all smooth sailing uh, in a trump presidency i'm just making it relative to the democrats but even in a trump presidency there are a lot of issues uh, and you also have to think about post trump because you know this will be the final term yes and in, in the final term usually the last year year and a half it's a president who's looking after his legacy his reputation uh, yeah. how, whom he should pardon what kind of a life he'll have uh, as a retired president and trump is likely to spend a lot of effort on building up himself and they're not the person is not likely to take some gutsy action so really uh, the second president uh, presidential term of trump will be more like two two and a half years three years of real work so if he wins india should take advantage of this window and get certain things done and and uh, he does have guts he has guts and he can take strong action so yes. if something uh, something captures his imagination and india is able to sell and give him in exchange something that he thinks is necessary and important you know for his legacy and his greatness uh, yeah. he might just do it so india should figure out what are the absolute things we want that are realistic for them to do yeah you know uh, and i would say that uh, actions vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis pakistan and china securing our border un security council maybe trying to get pok back something of that sort uh, something big it cannot be just little uh, you know yeah. kind of a tamasha pageantry jhula hugging it, it cannot be like that <laughs> it has to be strong deliverables and you know one has to one has to really say that uh, five six years of modi and uh, f nearly four years of uh, trump haven't produced a concrete actionable i mean concrete yeah. measurable thing on the ground that you could say okay right. this is the big deal like the the nuclear deal with bush was a big deal yes. Yes. in the bush era so yes. something of that magnitude india hasn't done it's yes. a lot of uh, you know we're feeling good they like us it's coming it's happening we're talking about <laughs> it but we have not delivered Right. Uh, and this is something that india has to make clear to uh, to the trump administration that the time has come we have to deliver something substantial right. and not yes. just a just a small thing now right. now regarding the electability of trump we've talked about the desirability from india's point of view but the electability right. uh, you know the uh, you touched on both the issues one is the pandemic the outcome of the pandemic and the other is the economy so trump has to dance between these two because the medical advice is very different from the advice of uh, re restarting the economy the medical advice is be very conservative sacrifice the jobs people should stay home and so on and but that means people are not going to restaurants they're not going out they're not traveling and that's bad for the economy so this balance in the middle uh trump has decided that he he has to reopen the economy because china is opening the economy and you don't want to give china a free hand and take over world market share industrially because their economy is open their factories are open the, and and uh, you know uh, other people are not so china is actually very greedy very aggressive taking advantage of this uh, situation to expand their 
uh, economy and expand their reach in other countries. And it's upsetting not only the Americans, but also the Europeans. A lot of Europeans are now quite upset that they think China is taking advantage of this uh, current situation. So yeah. Trump wants to not let them just uh, take us for a ride, but also be involved in opening this economy. That's part of the reason. And then, of course, domestic unemployment figures are very bad. Uh, you know, the production, uh, the, the GDP is going to be very bad figures for the rest of this year, I would say. Therefore, there is a desire to, uh, you know, reopen. And then the more uh, this is reopened, the more it'll hurt the, the lives at stake, the, the, you know, the, the people who get infected and killed. Yes. So this is a balancing act. And I'm not sure what the situation will be on November 3rd when people are voting, whether, uh, uh, you know, maybe the, the economy will be opened up too much too soon. And then there'll be a backlash of uh, the disease spreading. And then they'll have to close it down again. And so there may be a period where, where it's neither here nor there. And and that could be uh, a, a serious problem for, for Trump. So yeah. I think that's my sense of it. Now, uh, if there were a Trump administration, uh, one of the things they like, the, the, the Christian right, which is his basic uh, support base, uh, like uh, to do with India would be a counter to Islam and a counter to China. Uh, uh, but the Christian right also have very established links with the church and the evangelism and uh, this whole business about religious freedom and all that. So that's the mixture we have to deal with. Uh, and they may get even bolder. The Christian right may get bolder in dealing with India. Uh, on the other hand, if it's uh, Biden and the Democrats come in, you know, they have a strong Muslim lobby. They are really into this human rights, uh, left wing idea of human rights. Uh, yeah. uh, so this is this is a mix. Uh, it's a mixed bag. But I think in the balance, India would be better off uh, with Trump. That's uh, that's just my sense of it. Yeah. Let me ask you uh, then a specific question. <clears throat> what do you think would be in case Trump is reelected? His exact attitude to China, if you can make a projection. My feeling is that uh, he is probably going to get tough on China. That's my feeling. Uh, and, and this is also, you know, Trump also always needs a scapegoat. He also needs an enemy. Uh, mm -hmm. He needs, uh, he's not going to want to take responsibility for this COVID crisis. And uh, a, a good logical also, uh, you know, uh, target to go after would be China. Uh, and in what form it will happen? Will it be just uh, noise making and public relations or issue or will it be actual action? Uh, will it be in the form of tra trade war? It, it probably will be because American companies have been told that they have to change their supply, uh, their whole uh, supply lines, uh, you know, uh, and not be so dependent on uh, uh, the supply chain is too China centric. And so there's an opportunity for India. But some people have already moved to Vietnam. Some many companies yes. have moved from China to Vietnam uh, and other places. And Bangladesh. Uh, but I, Bangladesh also. But, you know, there is also a pressure to bring American companies back to back home because there's unemployment. So there is likely to be some financial incentive for companies that come back to the U.S. and create jobs. Because if you have 30 million, 40 million unemployed people here, uh, and the government is spending, you know, two trillion to four trillion to six trillion dollars to revive the economy. Then what better way than creating incentives for domestic production? Because you 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 solve many problems. You create and uh, you solve the unemployment problem. You also solve the China dependency problem. So my feeling is that one of the very large things that's likely to happen is a component of reviving the economy that has to do with creating jobs in the U.S., manufacturing jobs and taking them out of China. So this okay. this could be the way that uh, Trump also wants to kind of hit back at China. All right. Uh, then let me ask you a further question. Um, China is our neighbor. And uh, it's supporting Pakistan. And uh, we... Uh, have an issue with Pakistan on the fact that they are sitting on our territory, leave alone the fact that they are consistently uh, intervening into our country and uh, is, you know, sending terrorists, people out, people are dying on a daily basis. So if uh, we uh, were to take some uh, uh, 
uh, action against Pakistan, which is decisive in destroying uh, the terrorist cells in those parts of uh, uh, Indian occupied uh, Kashmir mm -hmm. and even some parts of uh, uh, Pakistan itself. Uh, I, I would say that as far as China is concerned, in the 1965 war, they did not intervene. Uh, 71, when we broke up Pakistan into two, they did not intervene. In Kargil, they did not intervene. I have not understood why not. Um, but, uh, I mean, I know I can guess, but um, I would say that I can't bank on it. So, therefore, they may intervene. If, for example, we decide now to finish this Kashmir problem by recovering the uh, occupied uh, territory, which uh, according to my assessment and talking to our military people, it's possible. But uh, if it's only India-Pakistan war, do you think there's something we can deal, give a, a, make a deal with America by which America too would not be inclined to intervene in case we decided to take Pakistan on on this issue? So in case they were an all-out war between India and Pakistan and India is the aggressor and the logic is valid and all that. Uh, so let's uh, divide the question into two parts. What, what could be China's reaction? What could be U.S. reaction? My sense is China will not intervene with boots on the ground and with uh, firepower. They will give Pakistan a lot of help. They're already uh, assembling uh, Chinese jets, fighter jets in Pakistan giving them a lot of hardware, a lot of technology, they are likely to help them out in that way. I don't think China will have kind of a, let's invade India, that kind of a thing, or let's throw missiles at them because they have too much to lose. And they would rather use China, rather use Pakistan as their proxy to keep nagging and hitting out at India. So India will need a certain deterrent on the Chinese border. Uh, but I think the situation uh, as far as the fear of an all out invasion with China is concerned is not, uh, I personally uh, would not consider that to be a high likelihood. As far as US is concerned, I would go the other way. I would tell US that you have to balance out the Chinese tilt to Pakistan by tilting in our favor, both in the UN Security Council. And also maybe with some some logistical help, maybe with the U.S. Navy, maybe we're not asking you to put troops here, but maybe with weapon systems, with intelligence, whatever. And maybe if uh, U.S. were to send a few uh, couple of, uh, you know, uh, aircraft carriers into the Pacific near China, that's enough to keep China occupied. I mean, you don't have to you don't have to have a hot war. You just have to yes. have a show of force on the Chinese border in the in the Pacific area uh, for China to say, hey, you know what? We don't want to mess with India at this time because we also have the U.S. right here. That kind of a deal with U.S. is more likely that India could negotiate that. Look, we we are going to take you into confidence. We want to finish this off with Pakistan once and for all. Uh, we are not asking you to have uh, military direct intervention, but you can keep China distracted and China occupied in the Pacific. I think that's a possible thing. Uh, the, the, the bigger and question that, to think about, huh? And that you think is only possible with Trump as president? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I, because he's got the guts, the courage, and he, he also has problems with uh, uh, China and with Pakistan. And, and the Democrats uh, are what? Compromised? The, the Democrats will, first of all, need a lot of time to rethink and revive their, uh, uh, their attitude towards India because right now it, they have either no attitude or a negative attitude and India will have to win them back and that will take some time. Uh, okay. And there are too many voices. It's not like a one-man show as in the case of Trump that he can decide. Uh, yes. the Biden is a weak guy. He's not going to be sitting down like Trump and saying, okay, this is my policy. He'll consult yeah. all these kind of people and all these think tanks and so on. They're very confused and they're, they're overall negative towards India. So uh, getting getting the Democrats organized into a tough action uh, uh, that uh, favors India, even without military action, but that is seen as uh, going against Pakistan is something that they're not going to want to do. Uh, remember that the nuclear bomb of the nuclear bomb of uh, 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 Pakistan, Clinton knowingly uh, waived. You know, there's an annual waiver the president has to have. 
uh, if the CIA reports that they are working on the, this nuclear thing and Pakistan was not supposed to and Pakistan had given a guarantee which they were violating and, and CIA would every year tell that uh, this is happening uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Clinton would wave uh, this thing. Yes. So the Democrats have not been able to act strong and tough in recent uh, years. I mean, low, way back it was different. Kennedy was very tough in the Bay of Pigs and all that. But yes. recent presidents have not been so tough. So I think that if India is looking for strong action, military action against Pakistan, then, you know, you better get Trump back. Okay. All right. Thank you.